again in person with those who are here assisting me this morning. Today is the third Sunday after the Epiphany. We remember today Jesus calling his first disciples from their fishing nets. And we also give thanks that Ricky is back with us after his surgery. And he would like to thank everyone for the birthday greetings last week, as well as the gift of fruit from the council on behalf of the congregation while he was uh, recovering from his surgery. So we're glad to have him back with us. We take a moment to prepare for our worship as we listen to the prelude. <laughs> Prepare for our worship today with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We take a moment to, to have our own quiet time of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn today is they cast their nets in Galilee. Hey. 
Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from Jen. The word of the Lord came to Jen a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jen set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days' walk across. Jen began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed the fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. <clears throat> Almost 15 years ago, in 2008, Bob and I made a difficult decision. We had been talking about the possibility of working in Tanzania since our first visit there in 2003. That year, we had traveled with a delegation, including our Synod Bishop from the Delaware, Maryland Synod, to cement the companion Synod relationship with the Mara Diocese and to attend the consecration of the new bishop. This was a newly established diocese or synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Tanzania. After the first trip in 2003, Bob traveled back to the country at the beginning of 2007. While there, the ELCA representatives to Tanzania informed him that they would be retiring within the next year, they suggested that we consider interviewing for this position. Their encouragement seemed like a confirmation of what we were wondering was a call from God. After 20 years serving congregations in and around the Baltimore, Maryland area, building a lovely home in Pasadena, Maryland, after developing many close relationships with people in our synod, we were 
we're leaving our net. Our family and friends, our comfortable lives in the U.S., our, our dear dog person, Marty, who went to live with Bob's brother in Arizona. We were dropping all we had been doing for many years and going to a foreign place to do a completely different type of ministry for an indeterminate number of years. <laughs> I'm a bit. I cried all the way to Chicago where we flew to begin our training. Have you ever been faced with a major change of jobs that caused you to move from the place you knew to one that was unknown? Have you ever had to leave a school where you were comfortable and had friends and go to another city to make where you, where you knew no one? Have you ever felt that you were being called to make a radical change in your life that would take you away from your net of past behaviors and relationships? This past week, I couldn't help but wonder how President Biden and Vice President Harris felt as they took their inauguration votes. Like any newly elected presidential teams, they were certainly starting on a new journey in their lives. Leaving one's net can be a very frightening thing to do. But that's just what Simon, Andrew, James, and John did when Jesus called them to follow him. They left their nets, their work as fishermen in the Sea of Galilee, and their families, not knowing what was ahead of them in their lives. They went from having work to put money in their pockets, to living on the kindness of those they met during their travels. They went from having roofs over their heads to not knowing where they put their heads each night. Why on earth would they do this? There was something about Jesus and his call to follow that convinced them to leave their nets. Perhaps they saw an opportunity to experience something new and different. Perhaps they knew that Jesus was someone very special. Perhaps they just wanted a change in their lives. We really don't know. What we do know is that if those four fisher folk had not been willing to leave their nets, the movement that became Christianity would have been very different. Perhaps so different that we would not be here worshiping together today. Think about it. Those called to follow Jesus had the same, had the opportunity to take part in a movement that changed the world for all time. This wouldn't have happened if they refused to leave the lives of work they knew so well. They risked so much, but they gained a chance to be personally taught by the Messiah the Son of God. They became teachers and leaders of a community of people that spread throughout the world. They traveled to places they had never heard of when they grew up in Galilee. They experienced both the joys and the sorrows of being the closest friends of Jesus of Nazareth, who had come to save the world. Through the good news message that Jesus had taught them, they changed the lives of people who had never met the one known as the Christ. They also suffered as a result of the message they taught. They were imprisoned and tortured for their belief. They were martyred due to the revolutionary nature of the gospel. Yet, their commitment has inspired men and women throughout the centuries to continue their gospel ministry through their lives of faith. Remember the questions I asked earlier in the sermon about whether you would experience a major change in your life that involved leaving your nets of what is known and comfortable 
to venture out into the unknown? Well, even if you couldn't think of an answer then, consider this. Every one of us has been called to leave our nets of life as it was before COVID and venture into uncharted territory in our personal, vocational, educational, and congregational lives. Think back on this past year and all the ways we've had to make changes in our lives and living in order to overcome the challenges that have come our way. Oh, some things will return more to normal eventually. But very little will really be the same as it was before. Through faith, we can look back on what we've experienced and learned and recognize that our Lord has been with us through it all. We haven't given all the resources we needed to face the present and the future with confidence. Perhaps the experiences of this past year were a way we, as individuals and as a congregation, are being called by Jesus to leave our nets of the past, of what we've always done, in order to be more, to more fully experience the wonder of following the Lord of all. As I said before, change in any form is frightening. However, there is so much we will miss when we return to the comfort of the past. Jesus called a few fisher folk to follow him and to learn to fish in a different way. During the past months, we have learned new ways to serve, to worship, to care, and to learn. As we look ahead, we can dare to use our God-given gifts and knowledge to share the gospel message in ways we may never have imagined. We can try new things and new ministries that might have seemed impossible because we can be certain that nothing is impossible with God. Because people left their nets, their tax booths, their businesses, when Jesus called them to follow him, the world has changed. We too can be instruments of change in our lives and in our ministry. We can bring change and justice and caring and education as we speak out for the welfare of those who are oppressed and vulnerable. The leadership of Trinity can be courageous and strong as we look into the future for our church. We are learning that we need fear the changes that may be necessary for us to follow the risen Lord from this point forward. We can draw confidence from the examples of the men and women who sacrificed for the gospel so that we all may know, that all may know the love and promises that Jesus brings. It took only a small group of men and women to bring the gospel to most of the known world at the time. Imagine what we could accomplish working together in Jesus' name. Amen. Join in confessing our faith, the faith of our baptism, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations. Let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world, for pastors and teachers, for deacons and deaconesses, and for musicians and servers, that all proclaim the good news of God's reconciling love, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For skies and seas, for birds and fish, for favorable weather and clean water, for the well-being of creation, that God raise up advocates and scientists to guide our care for all the earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who provide leadership in our cities and around the world, for nonprofit and non-governmental organizations, for planning commissions and homeless advocates, for our new president and vice president and all those who will join them in leadership of our government, that God inspire all people with the just use of wealth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, or grieving, for the outcast and all who await relief, Especially Ricky, Teresa, Pauline, Charlotte, Louise, Rodney, Yvonne, Carol, Edwin, Ruby, the family whose son was killed in a recent traffic accident, Patty Taylor and Mark Taylor at the death of her brother and his uncle, and Nancy Cuffman at the death of her brother. That amid suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the efforts of teachers, healthcare professionals, first responders, and all those who find themselves in harm's way, especially those of our own congregation who are first responders and medical staff, John, Stacy, Mike, Liz, Dixie, David, Evan, Bill, and James. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We come to our time of virtual offering, and I invite you, if you've not already, to Prepare your offering to mail to the church or whatever gift you would like to give to an organization that you would like to support. Also, during this time, I'd like for you to consider ways in which you can take what you've learned over these last months to further the message of the gospel in your life, in your neighborhood, wherever you are during the week. Take note of the announcements that you find in the bulletin. I want you to, to lift up a couple. 
to remind you that the coffee chat after Zoom worship is back. So please stay and uh, join me for a few minutes of conversation once the proslude has been completed. Again, we're glad to have Ricky back with us. Uh, all those who wish to commune um, on the first Sunday of February, uh, please be sure to contact the church office and arrange a time during office hours. That's Monday through Thursday, 8 to 1. The week of January 25th through 28th, that's this coming week, to stop by and pick up the elements. Also, because of COVID, we are not able to distribute ashes by hand this year for Ash Wednesday. We have, will have small containers of ashes available for our Ash Wednesday service. Um, they will be virtual. Um, so let us know um, if you would like to have a little package uh, prepared for you so that as we all are gathered together on Ash Wednesday, you may receive the ashes from your own hand. Please take note, there will be a nuts and study starting. Watch for further details. And if you have any announcements, any concerns, if you know of anyone who has need, please call the church office and let us know. As one of my friends has said to her parish, we in the office do not have the ability to know what you know if you don't tell us. So please let us know. And now we come to a blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We join in singing verses 1, 2, and 5 of Jesus Calls Us for the Tumult. <clears throat> Thanks be to God.